everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about house plant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And welcome to episode three of my House Plants All UK series, where me and Yoli travel all over the UK, visiting different house plant shops, garden centers, searching for the best plants, the best prices, and giving you little mini tours as we go. So this episode's slightly different. I went camping in Dorset over the bank holiday weekend and there were honestly so many gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous houseplant shops and garden centres. We kept driving past them and I was like, I want to go into all of them, but I firstly wouldn't have been able to actually buy any plants because I was camping and it was cold, so they wouldn't have survived. But I basically decided to go to this really lovely little independent one called Grow Slow in Bridport. The selection of houseplants themselves was actually fairly small, but they had loads of amazing outdoor plants and they also just had loads of really cool kind of like vintage bric-a-brac plant stands nice pots all that sort of stuff you'll see it in a minute but I thought because this video wasn't going to be that house planty what I would also do is give you some updates on some of my plants since I've got home there has been some drama but I will walk you through it in a minute but for now here is the tour of Grow Slow <laughs> So although I didn't buy any actual plants there, it just had such a lovely vibe. Everyone was really friendly. It had a really nice cafe. It was just a really gorgeous place. And I did get some other bits. So the kind of, oh, it's heavy. The biggest plant related bit I got is this gorgeous pot that I got for my mum. It's her birthday coming up and she really loves outdoor gardening and she absolutely loves these blue pots. I'm not sure how much they usually go for this one was 22 pounds, which I don't know. I don't know if that's good or bad to be honest, but as I say, it's an independent business. I'm more than happy to support it. And I know that my mum will absolutely love this. And then the other things are not plant related. I just got a few little bits again for my mum's birthday, but I got a really nice fossil. My mum's just had her bathroom repainted and she's trying to get it looking nice in there. So I thought these might be nice kind of little bathroomy bits or to put on top of pots, who knows? And then I got her rose quartz and I'm not sure what this stone is. It's beautiful. I don't know if you can see it kind of sparkling in the light. If anybody knows, then do let me know. But yeah, I'm I'm really, really happy with that. Um, and as I say, if you were going there for outdoor plants, their selection was good. So, so yes. But I will give you some of the plant updates from since I've got back. Oh, shall I start with the good or the bad? 
Let's start with the good ones and then I will move on to the ones that aren't doing quite so well. So one of the most exciting things to come home to was that one of my plant friends from Instagram sent me some Anthurium Forgetii seeds, which are currently in sphagnum moss. I've literally only put them in there today, so I don't want to open them up just yet, but he sent me six and I'm really hoping, fingers crossed, that they will sprout and turn into lovely new little Anthuriums. I also thought I would give you an update on one of the Anthurium seeds that I planted in my repot and chat i think about three four months ago but it's doing absolutely amazingly i think it's probably still too soon to tell if it's pure clarinervium or not but i'm thinking it i don't know i don't know i'm just kind of pitching guesses because i want to know because i'm impatient but yeah that one that little leaf there was just like a dot before i left and it's shot up so quickly and it's doing very well and also while we are on the note of anthuriums i also had a second attempt at pollinating my clarinervians before I went away. Unfortunately, I, I was really, really torn in what to do because obviously this plant here is a lot bigger, more well-established and is a lot more likely to do well if you pollinate it. But this one went into the male phase before this one. So I, I decided to pollinate this one, which is quite a small plant and I don't know if it's gonna work. I don't know if it'll happen, but I will keep you updated. I'll let you know, fingers crossed. I did also make a video on it, which I haven't edited yet, but I will put that together and I will get it up on my channel at some point if anyone's interested in how to pollinate your anthuriums. But yeah, that is the update on those. I also, my mum was watching my plants for me when I was away and I asked her to pollinate them and do some watering and stuff like that. And bless her, she did try some pollinating. So again, if it works, it's all down to you, mum. Thanks very much. But some more positive updates. So this is my Hoya Astralis Lisa, which was, I mean, absolutely tiny a few weeks ago. I'll put a clip in of what it looked like then. And then if you look at it now, it's just, it's gone absolutely crazy. It's got so much new growth and I'm so pleased with how it's doing. That one's been in my cabinet and is loving life in there. So I'm very, very happy with that. Oh, I've just seen how red my face is. I'm really, really sunburnt and it's very warm in here. So my face is just going poof. But yeah, that's, that's good update number one, two, three, I don't know. Um, and then my philodendron marme has done really well. Again, this is the one that I got from Green Spaces ID fairly recently and I cut back because it wasn't doing amazingly. And that leaf has held on really well and has pretty much hardened up now. And it only gave me this new one, I think about two days before I went away. And in less than a week, it's now got a new growth point there. So it's got another leaf on the way already, which I'm so, so, so chuffed about. Um, and then another Hoya one, this is my Hoya Crimson Queen, which again, I will put in a clip of from a few weeks ago. She was, I mean, she was about half the size. She was absolutely tiny. And now look at all that beautiful new growth. She's doing so well. And I'm, I just, oh, I love that new growth, how beautiful and pink it is. I don't know if the camera really does it justice. It never does. Can you all see? You can kind of see. There we go. You can see that one. It's just so gorgeous. Um, Right, and the last positive plant update. On the whole, I was going to say there is a lot of new growth in here. I was pleasantly surprised in general, apart from a few, but we'll go through those. I was pleasantly surprised when I came back to these ones. But this, my spider plant, which I put on my top fastest growing plants list, and you can see why. Again, I'll put a clip in of it from a couple of weeks ago so you can just see how much it's grown. But I came home and I was like, oh my God, it was literally touching the sides of the cabinet. And before it was just kind of quite small. So I'm really really proud of this one. Right, now onto the ones that are not doing quite so well. So this is the one that I'm really, really sad about. This is one of my fiddle leaf figs and as you can see is really not looking good. It's got lots of yellowing leaves and this is partly my fault and partly the environment it was in when I was away because this one wasn't quite ready to be watered before I left. It was kind of, it was almost there but it probably needed another day or two and I just thought, you know what, I'm going away for five days. I'll take the risk and I watered it and that was error number one because these ones much prefer underwatering as opposed to overwatering and are really susceptible to root issues. So that is that is what happened first. And then also, as you can probably see, this room is quite bright, especially at this time of year and it gets so, so, so hot. And I work from home most of the time and I am able to kind of monitor the room and open the windows, get the fans going, all that sort of stuff. But because I'd already given my mum loads of jobs to do in terms of like turning on 
on grow lights, turning on fans in the cabinets, monitoring humidity, all that sort of stuff. I didn't want to be like, and also every, every half hour, not half hour, every hour, go and check this room and make sure it's not too warm. So I've got a few that are just suffering with heat damage basically. And this again is one of them. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with her yet. I think obviously these leaves are going to have to come off. They're not going to yeah, I mean, there we go. They just fall right off, which is so sad. This is the plant that in some of my other videos when it was behind me, people were like, wow, it looks so perfect. Is it real? This is proof that it's real. And yeah, unfortunately, it's never going to be the same. But yeah, so that's that one. Um, and then my Caladium lindenii here. I don't really know what's going on with her. So she didn't dry out she's still fine the roots look fine i've taken a look but and again i don't know if you can probably see on camera obviously she's got some brown tips down here which i think is due to the temperature in the room lack of humidity but she just doesn't look very vibrant she she almost looks like she's got kind of a tinge of yellow to the leaves and i'm hoping that doesn't mean that she's going to die back but i will just again have to monitor her and see um and then a couple of the little syngonium propagations that i put in moss as you can see, this one is not doing well at all. Um, in fact, I might just take them out of the moss and just see if there's any any rootage going on. Mm. Well, there might be actually, yeah, there's a little bit of movement down there. So you can see they've only been in moss for, I think about six days or something like that. It really hasn't been long. This one isn't really doing anything yet. So. I think what I might do is I might just chop the leaves off and make them into little wet stick propagations, put them in my propagation box and hopefully they'll be absolutely fine. But not how I wanted it to go, but it is fine. These things happen. And then the last thing that is really not good, I'll put some clips in because she's currently in isolation, but my massive alocasia, firstly, I think has been sunburnt, definitely again, damaged by the heat in the room. You can see all the kind of yellowing patches on some of the newer leaves, which are really sensitive and really don't like direct sun. So that is issue number one. And also she has got spider mites and this plant has had spider mites before, not for a couple of years, but it's oh god they're just they're such a nightmare to get rid of i hate spider mites so much so again she will have to go back in to be treated but yeah i think those are the main plant updates there are more that i could go through but those are kind of the best and the worst i would say but yeah if there's any other garden centers houseplant shops anything like that that you would like to see featured in this series at some point then do let me know i really love going off your recommendations as opposed to just kind of trying to find places myself so drop them in the comments down below and i will try and include them at some point but i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did please make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel have a lovely day and i will see you in the next video